Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Can anybody hear me? Well, Wayne is here, and I'm looking at the background. I'm asking you if the background is okay. Testing. I hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear I you can. Hi, Wayne. How are you? Yeah, nice. How are you doing? I'm okay. It seems like we've got some connection issues. We usually, um, so I've taken us off, guys, and going to go to the live stream. Wayne, we can see you. We can see your silhouette a little bit. Yeah, we and just. And here I am. Aha. Let me get rid of that thing. That's and all. She, that. she does it. You like the you like the invisible man. Yeah. I think I can get rid of it. <laughs> it's kind of cool looking, so, especially when he came up and you can only see his eyes, uh, the eye sockets. Let me see what I can, I can get rid of that. I don't know what I did with it. That's yeah. fine. We're going to go. Give Here we go. I think I can fix. I think a I few more that. minutes to get into the Zoom room. That's all right. Take your time. We are live on the Facebook feed. If you guys get a chance, go ahead and share it out to all your friends and all the people. Hey, Mr. Waves, good to see you. Is that better? Way better. Yes, we, <laughs> we can see you. Yay. Been, Thank you for joining us. I've been testing with my new background. I guess it doesn't work well. Oof. You know, uh, I'm, I'm up in my trying area myself for technology and so but, but you we have been job. fiddling around for a couple of weeks but we're trying you know we're trying to get Thank better you. at the technical stuff it's not our it's not our lane but we appreciate sure. it particularly because you are in the media industry you're in the media industry i mean i did it years ago when it was just chirons and we stood on the floor and we gave hand signals and now technology's changed i couldn't find my way around the editing room if i wanted to um and so it's been years, at least 20 years since I've been in any kind of production studio at all. Uh, yeah. But we're giving a couple of people a chance. We can see more people are coming to the Zoom room. Um, so we, we can just keep talking. We'll open up the show officially in a few minutes. Hopefully my audio's not too bad. I've been working on it all day. Um, is okay. it cracking up real bad? No, I, actually. I can, I can hear you fine. I hear you okay, fine. Okay, great, um, great. There are moments where you freeze in your mo in your movements, but you're, yeah. you're speaking just fine, though. Thank you. Um, uh, I've been moving around up here trying to find a good spot all day, yes. and it's not looking for your sweet There's, spot. <laughs> I was looking for my sweet spot. I see we have another visitor. Uh, Tia Davis is in the Zoom room. Anybody else who is out there right now, come on into the Zoom room. You go to Lisa and Rashida's Facebook page, or if you go to our webpage, you will find the link. It's the same link every week. We want to be consistent so you guys can find us. Come on into the room. We love to see your faces and have the interaction face to face. And now that we have finally figured out how to uh, stream it to Facebook, uh, we see that. Um, you know, it's great so that other people can also see you. Before, when we started, Wayne, we just, you could only see Rashida and I. Okay. And you couldn't see everybody else. Uh, but we finally figured out how to do it. Uh, so we're getting better with each week. Um, well, one reason I like so, you know, Facebook, too, because it's easier to um, to share. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, people definitely respond better. Uh, we up to uh, like 186 people are actually on the feed right now, but we've got four people in the Zoom room, and I know that there was some people in particular who told me they would be joining us. Uh, so folks, <clears throat> Rashida's orchestrating something over there in the background. Uh, you can see that Rashida and I really? are still, we keep saying, we keep, yes, yeah, okay. great. It must be our God child. I see him poking around his, his head around you can see that Rashida and I are still apart. Um, I'm still on sabbatical. I'm in the little cottage area up here in upstate New York, relaxing. Um, at, you know that I left my firm, and so this has been a transition for us. Um, and so uh, it's good. We've been saying this, and we're going to do a segment on it. It's good, couples. Take some time apart. You grow together, but you need to grow separately to be your best selves in the equation, if you will. Um, so... Um, I'm going to go ahead as, you know what, let's get two more minutes. Anybody object to two more minutes? Give folks a couple more minutes to, to get in. Again, if you want to join us in the Zoom room, go to Lisa and Rashida's Facebook page or go to either of the group pages. 
um, either of our personal pages, Lisa Bennett, Rashida Bennett, and the link is always the same each week. So feel free to show your face because we love seeing you guys in the Zoom room. Um, we love seeing you and we can have that one-on-one face-to-face kind of chat. So in one minute, I'm going to give Mr. Wayne Young, who is joining us from Washington, D.C. We're going to do a little bit of just a tiny bit of intro about Mr. Wayne, and then we're going to let him take it away. You know, uh, since since we started this thing, you know, we, it's morphed. It morphed from just Rashida and I talking about couple stuff to us doing a live talk because there were things that people wanted to weigh in more and give more interactive feedback. And then we added the segment about uh, small businesses because, you know, as our community is suffering, we're, we are always suffering anytime the country goes into a recession because we can't, it's so, so hard to find each other. Um, it's kind of, I hate to use this analogy, but it's kind of like I was at universities that were both, uh, both predominantly not African-American. They weren't HBCUs. And so, you know, it's always a running joke when you get to a large university and there's only a handful of kids of color and you all congregate over in the student union at the same two or three tables every day. And they you call it the black table, <laughs> right? Or you call it the black house or you have a dorm where there's a black floor or something like that. But anyway, we, we felt like since our platform was growing, it would be a perfect opportunity to allow vendors and small businesses that we wanna support and give ourselves some options to come on and showcase. So um, we've opened the, the floor to all of it. You guys, if you want to, well, to, yeah, leave yourself on mute right now. But when you get ready to talk, just take yourself off mute. There's no real rhyme or reason. So let's kick it off. I'm Lisa, and that is she has herself on mute. You messing up your cue here. I'm Rashida, and we're, <laughs> we're the minutes. <laughs> Thank you for joining Sorry us for this, <laughs> for this uh, version of Let's Talk. You know it's live, so all kinds of stuff can go on. We get it all messed up Ooh. a lot of times. <laughs> Um, I was saying to the guests who were in the Zoom room, Rashida and I are still separate on sabbatical. So you can see we are in two different backgrounds, two different places right now. Ooh, um, but And I'm missing my honey bunch, so it's almost time to go home. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right. No, no. You <laughs> can stay as long as you need. No, no. I miss now y'all hear <laughs> Crap, right? No. She's talking crap. No. But I anyway, I have... I know she she's talking crazy, but she calls me like four times a day. <laughs> we usually go to sleep talking to each other on the phone. So, any, and, and, and now that they've got the, what is the little app we use where you can see duo. each other? It's really kind duo. of duo, duo. So anyhow, let us let us go ahead and jump right into it. Um, since I had the pleasure of talking to Wayne Young this afternoon, I will do the honors here. Mr. Wayne Young reached out to uh, Rashida and I um, a few days ago to talk about the show and to talk about a piece that he's working on. He's a publisher and author. He resides in Washington, D.C., but he is a Gary, Indiana product. And yes. to make it Ooh, even better, yeah. he is a West Side Cougar. <laughs> so all you horseman people who are in our chat room every week talking crap, bam, there you go. <laughs> so hey, Wayne, yeah, like, your phone's messing Wayne, up. I can't um, really hear you. Oh, I know that. See, that's a West Side. I mean, a whole yeah, response right there. So, and where's Curtis Mabel with his his horseman tote himself? Where he had to go? Oh my but anyway, um, Wayne um, runs a publication out of Washington D.C. D.C. Um, called the Port of Harlem, and they focus on really bringing the the, the things that are important to the African American community to the forefront. Um, and I'm you ready to mess up the word I was going to use. But anyhow, I'm uh -oh. going to get out of Wayne's way and let him really talk about what he does because, you know, I, I'm a Garyite and I didn't know about his publication. And this brother has been out there trying to educate us on all the different uh, facets of being African, pan Africanism, all kinds of things for years. And, and, and I miss So I wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to, and I know he does a lot of stuff in Gary, However, there's still some of us, particularly those who have transplanted back, we don't know. And so any way we could help more people be aware, this is what I wanted to make sure we did. So, Mr. Wayne Young. Yeah, well, thank you very much. It was good. Take it away. Tell us all about it. Oh, yeah, it was very good reading about your show because uh, it, 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 it's part of what we do and that we try to paint a, a broad picture of African people, not only African people in the United States, but African people throughout the world. 
And so this, uh, the story we're going to do on you all on Thursday helps broaden people's thoughts, not only about what it happens in the great Midwest, but also what happened with same-sex couples and people who are just not always seen on television or on even on the internet. So we're looking forward to that, to, to, to the story and looking forward to see how our readers on, uh, who mostly get the magazine through subscription, which is free and it's delivered online now. We used to be in paper. But generally speaking, like you said, we're a pan-African magazine, meaning that we look at things from a broad pan-African perspective, not just an American perspective. And so some of our stories are based uh, about people in other parts of the African world. And we try to show people wherever they live that generally we are all are much more alike than we are different and that our issues are pretty much the same. So one of the stories that's coming up next week is about a guy who lives in the Gambia, which is a small country on the west coast of Africa where our second largest readership is. And he is a Black Lives Matter person. He got put in jail or at least was arrested in the Gambia for uh, questioning the police. So it sounds very familiar to the problems we have here. But the issues are the same. We don't always hear about it and always not able to make that connection unless someone helps us make that connection. And we help people make that connection. And I'll just end right by saying that he's also protesting uh, a Gambian American who was killed in Atlanta. And I know we haven't heard much of that story, but yes, there was an African American who was of Gambian descent who was killed in Atlanta just before or just after uh, George Floyd. So that's what we pretty much do. And yes, we we still work in Gary. Our second largest readership among cities is in Gary. And even when Gary had this, I think it was the 100th anniversary, I keep forgetting now, was it 75 or was it 100? I mean, we did a special exhibit there in Gary and we had our one of our um, photographers work with children in Gary and it came over a photography exhibit and it was at the library downtown. And we still work with the, um, the people at the Aquatorium. So yeah, we keep our foot in Gary <laughs> proudly. <laughs> I can appreciate that. I too, um, and uh, I'm not sure who else is on the feed, but a lot of us who did, and I, I was t t talking to Wayne this afternoon saying, you know, the one thing that, that I love about Gary, um, we have, they, the educational system was so superior um, at the time that we grew up in the 70s and 80s. Um, I can't vouch for the 90s, I was gone. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> You're dating everybody. <laughs> <laughs> superior, and And it should be such a small community to infiltrate, and I use that word, infiltrate every industry. And if you look across industries, you will find that there's somebody from this little city named Gary everywhere in every facet of industry. And we're doing great things. And so, you know, it's too bad that people who sit outside of Gary don't really understand the, the richness that uh, we come from. But I'm glad that you have a publication um, that is helping people to see, again, just the more of the talent that comes out of, of the place that we grew up in. So I thank you. And I want to be sure, you know, everybody on this call, everybody on our feed, please, please subscribe to the publication. You know, again, we are always talking about supporting people. And now we have the brothers who, who's been publishing. How, wait, how long have you been putting the this portal out 20, now? This will be our 20, 25th year in November. And the subscriptions are free. And our Facebook likes also help us maintain uh, being a healthy publication. And of course, the likes are free too. Yeah, so if nothing else, go there and get some likes. Then that, you know, go there and, and uh, follow because that's the way they stay in business. Again, we always talk about small businesses. They're always be small and never be corporations. And what we need is for our businesses to scale and become corporations so we can stop complaining about the Home Depots and all of that. If we never put our money in, we can't, we can't <laughs> do anything. So please support Wayne um, uh, so that we can get this thing off and rolling. Anybody else want to weigh in on that particular issue, topic? Or I saw Rashida. Or Go just ahead. the issue of what Pan-Africanism is and what does it mean in terms of African-Americans? You know, sometimes we have these discussions with the Ados people. They're the African they're the African descendants of states or something like that. And they're generally for reparations, like a lot of people are, but they somehow want to make sure that only people who are, um, can have identifiable enslavement in the United States to get paid for the work of our ancestors. And our question is that, you know, we're all for reparations, 100%. We've worked on that reparations for decades. But the issue is, it's very difficult to determine which one of us are children of the enslaved in North America. Because some of us lived in Canada and came back. 
Some of us lived in Cuba and came back. Some lived mm. with, went from the Liberia and came back. All kinds of stories. And there's a lot of people who we consider to be African Americans that are very famous, and they weren't born here. Understood. Understood. Oh, that, I understand. That, that 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 makes it complicated. <laughs> Right, it makes it very complicated. So the issue should be, you know, if you're going to be really into that, you need to start learning how to determine your ancestry. <laughs> well, you know, that kind of takes me back to the conversation you and I were having this afternoon. Why why is it necessary? I mean, exactly. why do we need to take it? You know, when our conversation, you know, why do we have the need as people? It's the same reason that we sort of have racism going on in America right now, right? Um, somebody wants to be better or somebody wants some criteria to make somebody different from the other group of people. Why? 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 I just don't understand it. Exactly. And um, I, and that's but, what we have the conversation this morning. I understood exactly what you were saying. And that's why I love you all story so much. Because again, why do people even have to question it? And some of our readers are, are in Africa and where they're actually dealing with these issues now. As you know, the United Methodist Church is about to split. And I had to explain to one guy from Malawi the other day that you're siding yourself with church people who split along the lines of enslaving Africans before the Civil War. And that's how you got the, the church to split. They became united in 1968. And so now they hear again about the split over what? How to treat people who are not straight. So you're Crazy. siding with these wow. people who hated us and us as black people in 18, six, before 1863. These are the people you're, you're siding with. You know, and it's tough because, you know, okay, so that kind of leads me to this. I was watching a couple of things and, and you guys have all seen it where right now, because race is race relations is so tense. Every little thing sets somebody off. And I can tell you for a fact myself as, as and you know, most of you guys know me pretty well, I don't have a prejudice, I couldn't care less. Uh, my family is, is so mixed up and intertwined about everything and has been for generations, it doesn't matter to me. But when I'm angry, when I'm angry and somebody really irks me um, and they happen to be from a, another ethnicity that I can see visually, it's one of the places that I go. I will say something crazy and go like, why did I say that? Because I think, I don't know, we're just at a loss for how to articulate how angry we are in the moment. And so we'll look and say something about the color of their hair or their weight or their something. We're going to find something. And I, I don't know, I guess maybe just because whoever we're talking to doesn't listen. And so we feel like we have no other choice than we're so backed in the corner to defend ourselves in that conversation that we got to, you can't even... You can't have an intellectual conversation. Now I gotta attack you. I'm not sure what it is. Well, it seems like it doesn't matter if it's us amongst each other or if it's us dealing with other people or exactly. what have you. It seems to be human behavior. Sandra Mosley. Hey. Raymond Reese, Sandra Mosley to you. Take yourselves off of. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, they take you and, and I, again, I want to make sure that, and if anybody else wants to weigh on, on that particular topic, we always allow uh, or have when people talk about the projects they're working on and or the products they're selling, that kind of thing first. And then we usually have a topic that comes from the audience, but I like this one. We can roll with it or we can go ahead and jump over to the topic that's been hot for the week. Anybody? 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 <laughs> I came up with something last week. Ray Mill, I'm sorry, you said no. I said I said I came up with something last week. Um, I don't I don't know. It's, I I believe first of all, um, first of all, um, Mr. Young, nice to very nice to meet you, and Likewise. I'm looking forward to being able to go into. Uh, I have the, the link up on my on my laptop now, so I look forward to kind of learning what's going on because you don't you just don't know you know but you don't know or you Agreed. think you know <laughs> but you don't know because you think that all oh, uh, a and b go together but really c makes a and b go together so you know and I, so i look forward to being able to look at your website and look at everything that's going on and just educate myself on the now and the before 
absolutely. But I think you will enjoy it. A lot of people do. They, they yeah, they, we because they, we because we're black or because we have African descent. Do we know what Pan Africanism is? I know. Uh, I know some African American history. I know a lot of African history, but I don't know. Like Ray Mel said, a whole lot of stuff I don't know. My mother had this saying. She say, "The stuff you don't know make a whole new world," <laughs> and it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. I wonder yes. if anybody encountered any of the uh, Ados people online, though. It's called African African descendants of slavery. If you encountered Afri- any of the people online, African descendants of slavery. Of slavery. Okay. I probably did. I don't think I have. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think, is... I, I think it's is it Ray Mills? One of our mics is giving a whole lot of crackle back. I'm not sure who it is. Um, I'll put mine back on you for now. I think um, it's you. Is it me? Nope. Okay. I think it was just, we got a loud whistle now. <laughs> so I'm just making tea. It's, a, it's almost <laughs> like a, a, right, like somebody blowing wind through their teeth or AOL, you know, the old AOL whistle when you first got online. <laughs> and it goes, turn on, turn on at the end. <laughs> When it's trying to connect <laughs> through the telephone line back in the day. So, okay. Hey, Rashida, you're still on mute. I see your I was like, can moving. you, can you uh, still hear it? Yeah, it's, it's not, it's clearly not you because you were on mute. I don't know what it is. It could have been me. There okay. it is. There it is. I don't know what it is. So, um, any other, any, does anybody in the Zoom room or anybody online who is following, I'm looking at the uh, feed too to see if there's any topics that are coming up. No, yes, maybe so. (laughs) We always keep a list of topics because what we find is that people like to say stuff, but they don't want to be the first ones to raise their hand. Kind of like that grade school thing when you were kids. Like, I'm not raising my hand first, even though I want to know. You, you go, you go. Then after you go, I'll go. And then we all can go. (laughs) (laughs) But people will. Wait, you're text us up. later, which is how we get the topics, right? Yeah, people will so text I'm us. I'm going to throw after. it out there right? and say, hey, I meant to say this or whatever. So, you know, there was a firestorm this week uh, on the Red Table Talk and all over the world about this young man named, what is his name? Uh, Alcina. August Alcina. Who I have to admit, I never heard of the kid before. Um, uh, right. And that doesn't mean right. that... And that doesn't that doesn't mean he wasn't famous. Um, and so I I was going, why did we need to know about this relationship? Who gave a crap? Who cared? But anyway, it set up a firestorm. So uh, because of all of this that came out about him and Jada Pinkin and whether or not they had a relationship in the middle of her worship, I wanted to go see the video, uh, see the see the interview myself. And actually, I wrote a piece. Um, on it that uh, got published this afternoon. Um, I wrote a piece on it because I, you know I had to go and dissect. I did all the hoopla was about and why was this so much more important than all of the gazillion things we got going on, races, pandemics, all of this stuff. That thing took over the headline. And so I just <laughs> wanted to see how he pivoted or what he positioned and what the heck he had to say. So I was, you know, you know, here's the set. Did anybody else see it? First of all, anybody else see the interview? I saw um, I saw clippings of it. I didn't see it. Did you see his interview or her interview or both? Because I went to watch both to be sure I had a. It was diff- it was it was it was Jada and okay. uh, and uh, Will at the red table themselves. Right. Okay. And then you get the commentary from the reporters, and I think that's the gist of it. And I guess the, to me, the gist of it was learning that they had an open relationship in the first place, and so it wasn't something like they supposed to. It's like she we wasn't know. doing something that he may not have yet. And as one reporter said that, you know, just a couple of weeks earlier, oh. they, they were showing a lot of people. That was my reaction. Lisa, you're breaking up, but then yes. you're like jumping in and out. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure why I'm not moving. I was hearing yeah. Wayne. They were showing a they were showing a lot of affection on television. Okay. So now the point was that maybe they were just acting that day. Oh, oh. You know, well, I always kind of got that's that's, that's their my thing. Take on it. Um, it's not. Yeah, they've always had an open thing. That's been that way for a long time, as long as I can remember. At this point, that they've really? had an open relationship. 
but that they certainly love each other. And they went through some really, really rough times because I remember some years back when Will was saying, I'm not responsible for your damn happiness. Go figure it out. <laughs> Let me know if right. you got it figured out. If I'm still right. here, we can do it. And if you don't, oh, well. So I guess, you know, after hearing, the way the young man positioned himself and how he answered and, and, it, and in fairness to him the question was kind of answered like what was that that was going on a while back was that true or not um but I think he think he took his answer too far and it, he went somewhere that it really kind of undermined if you go back and look at his the whole interview where he was talking about his own self moderation his own self-discovery mm -hmm. his growth he had so many, I thought, so many wonderful nuggets of information about how it takes us long to do a couple things. One, face our own fears. Two, deal with our parents because we have this expectation that they got the answers and they know how to parents, right? Like they have this manual and like they haven't been damaged before they became parents. And so a hard time trusting our expectation to who they really are as people and they don't have answers. And, and, and then his self-actualization about being responsible for his own life and his own happiness. And he's 20 something years old. So I thought how magnificent at 20 something years old, which it probably took me to 30, if not later in life, to forgiving my parents and all of the things he talked about. I thought it was a shame that it got completely overshadowed by the one comment that he made concerning right. him and Smith. And I go, Please not. Why is this the headline when he had all this great stuff about becoming? It was almost along the same line Michelle Obama's book about becoming Michelle Obama. He talked about becoming himself and being okay with it. And what the world got out of it was, oh, he slept with Jada Pinkett Smith. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I think right now, because we're all um, hungry or thirsty for something, something in the headlines other than COVID, other than um, race, any racist acts or somebody else dying or police, more police brutality. I mean, even today, I had a moment where I, I saw something and it just took me and I was just like over the edge. I, I was like, I don't even know. It was just a moment and I was just so angry and I was upset, but I think we were kind of grasping for something. It wasn't, and, and what's crazy is this, that was like four years ago. That's not even <laughs> recent. See, I didn't but they're coming at it like, oh. Well, the affair was four years ago. The interview is recent, Why the, the interview was just yes. last week. The affair is what I'm talking about. But I get your point. It's yeah. so old, it could, it could stay old. But we saw just for something different, it felt it felt like it's new. <laughs> Boy, I mean, the world been set on fire about it ever since. Uh, and, and I go, and, and here's the, the irony of it all. If you again, if you go through and you look at both um, interviews, his response to it, I thought was I thought was great. And then she got dragged for her responses. She and her responses were great because she acknowledged some things that were important as far as I'm concerned. One, he was not a home wrecker, and she was not going to sit there and be talked about badly as if he had committed a crime by himself. She said, I take responsibility. Will said, I kicked her to the curb, and I didn't even want her at that point. Well, I didn't get, really give a rat's ass what she was doing or who she was doing with. I just wanted her to hush shit out and come home if she wanted to or stay gone. <laughs> and I think that's what's so unique and also um, a breath a breath of fresh air but at the same time we go <gasps> did he really say that but it's okay I think right now people self love and self loving you and finding you if you have someone and you're in a marriage with someone and they allow you the space to grow that's one thing that I love about my marriage to my wonderful wife is the fact that she just allows me to grow, even though it get a little rough in them spots, you know, growth is it gradual slowly. And in them spots when it's rough, she is very supportive and very loving and very giving. And, and that's one of the many things like, that, listen, I love you. She's on sabbatical right now. You need that time for you. What are you doing? You want to sleep all day? Sleep. 
you want to you want to write write you want to talk you have to when you're in it one thing i did that I, I and i think we said this in our one of our shows is um we have a prenup and in the prenup all it says is divorce is not an option, not an option. Right. It don't matter how hard mm -hmm. or care what we going through, divorce is not an option. Right. Yeah. So, and believe me, we don't have some moments where, I, oh Lord, have mercy on my soul. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that, and that's, and I think one of the reasons you can say, hey, Rashida, if this is right or wrong, one of the reasons we like the show is, and we like them, is because we identify with that. We have, we, listen. A year ago, <laughs> we was right at, and that wasn't the first time. A year, no, it was two years ago now. I'm about to say, um, I'm about to say, I think it was two years, baby. Two years ago, we were like, everything was packed. But we, again, because we have a prenup that ain't nobody going nowhere, go, no, and then we unpacked it all. <laughs> and, you know, um, you got to give each other the space to become, and, I, and so I applaud them. What I really applaud them for is being bold enough to talk about it out loud in front of the whole world to criticize them about it when they don't need the money, the publicity to do it. You know, they're famous. They don't need to be famous. And I, and that was the only one thing I, his, um, his recitation that I questioned was, you know, I, and somebody said to me, Lisa, well, you wouldn't know who he is anyway because you don't listen to the radio. I said, that's my point, because now I do, and I still don't listen to the radio. So <laughs> for me, and even for you, Wayne, and even for you, Sandra, he became instantly a part of our household, and we have no interest in anything he's doing or has done, but because he mentioned that thing as opposed to his first, now everybody who never cared knows his name mm -hmm. and probably won't ever buy a record or is it record? Whatever the hell it is. I probably she won't said, ever buy it. She said, buy a record. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even, only DJs can get violent. And so, having spent a little bit of time in the music industry, I know that you, and, and we've been saying this to young folks, Rashida used to be in the entertainment industry too. Uh, so, when you sign a deal, that's not really a, a that's a loan it must be paid <laughs> and so i said well he was supposed to be on there promoting his album and talking about his growth well then that uh that kind of go increase sales ain't it i mean let's just keep real i don't see any other purpose album. in mentioning yeah. it yeah <laughs> no, that's what the whole interview was about Right. And so, and, and again, I, and in fairness, I realized she asked the question, but his initial response was, I don't think it's important for me to divulge who I sleep with, how I sleep with them, something along those lines. And I thought, how brilliant, leave it right there. But then he went on and I was like, so then I go, well, maybe he was trying to get the record sales because <laughs> he had already closed the door on answering the question. And now you keep the focus on the larger message that you came to give, unless your larger message was to sell more. But that's just, sorry, that's just my skepticism. I mean, who am I? <laughs> well, did you listen to any of his music? No. I, okay. <laughs> Have you? No, I'm, I'm going to pull him up after, yeah, and see what, what his well, music see, is. I know my, nothing that's about my him. Point. You accomplished it. Out of curiosity, you're going to go, well, let me see if he can sing, since he just blew this out. Well, let, let me go see what, what he's about. That's true. Yeah, but I ain't downloading crap. <laughs> well, if I have to, no, I'm not downloading it. <laughs> no. She said, if I have to, no, no, I'm really? not downloading it. <laughs> if Rochelle ain't singing up, so I, I was just curious, you know, if anybody else, you know, what y'all's thoughts were on that, I just thought, wow, how could this be that much more important than all of the stuff that we're facing? That the whole world is, I mean, talking about it. Even our pastor mentioned it at church. Yes, <laughs> man, he was like, since the world is just so, <laughs> so concerned about Will and Jada and whoever there, I was like, oh my goodness. My Lord. <laughs> he was saying, we need to focus, get back. To focus. 
Right. And we need to be careful that those kinds of things come a distraction along that line. Unless somebody else has something I want to um, talk about, they want to mention about along that, that line. I got something else I want to throw in that I think was another distraction, if you will. Anybody? Anybody? No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. So, uh oh, I hear Tia. Tia Davis. Oh, she's is Tia over. connected now? No. She's like, no, no. Oh, uh, then she went back out. I thought she had something she wanted to throw in there. Um, uh, so what do you guys think about the whole Kanye Kanye for president? What do y'all think about? <laughs> Another one of those things. But I, I understand he's. Another one of those things that don't necessarily, that don't necessarily need to be discussed. <laughs> right. He drops out. Say that one. I mean, again, Wayne. <laughs> um, he has dropped out already. Oh, he has. Yes. Oh, that was good to hear. <laughs> that's something, that's, uh, something, that's something worth celebrating. I, the problem, I, uh, the problem oh. for me is this. Go ahead, go ahead, Raymond. No, I was going to say, um, I think he needs some inside help. And when I say inside, I mean, for his mind and his soul, I think that he has a lot of takers and no givers. And so when he said, when he does stuff like that, like just randomly and in July say, I want to run for president. It's random, but I don't think it's random. I, I always tell, I've told Kiki and I've told several other people, I think he's been bad. I think he's been messed up since his mom passed. And Absolutely. no one has, and no one has actually tried to help him. And with the, some of the things that he does is scary. And some of the things, because some of the things he does is, is I think, um, in his mind, genius to do. Yes. Because, oh gosh. Uh, because he announced that he announced that presidency the day after he signed a long-term contract with the Gap. Right. So I think some some stuff is strategic, and I think some things he's crying out for help, but nobody's helping. Everybody, nobody, nobody's helping. Everybody's laughing. Well, and I think he. Go ahead. Go, no, I was saying I think he's. Um, I think he needs to help, but I think because of his actions, he's burned bridges and no one wants to really reach out. Or they're too scared what? to reach out because he, I think those maybe that people that may have reached out to help him may have been burned or just when he's, cause he, I think he's in a manic state of mind a lot. Yeah. And I, I don't, and, go and ahead. Maybe, okay, so maybe it's just me, just from, I, observing his physical presence, like his face, it seems like it's very swollen. His skin is, it seems like he's always perspiring. Um, uh, the look at the, his eyes is, I don't know if it's, you never, you ever see someone who um, they've taken some, some uh, a Valium or some type of medication, a narcotic, and you can see, or they, uh, old school, New Jack City, as soon as they put that, uh, they hit that crack pipe, their eyes go. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm trying to give you good visuals. But honestly, <laughs> I feel as if when, when, even when he was in the, in the Oval Office with Trump, and he said that he was reincarnated somewhat. I can't even remember oh, who was, it was. Jesus. He was Jesus now. No, For a minute, Jesus. he was Jesus. Was, yeah. But it, and I, there are so, and, and I don't know if it is spiritual warfare. I don't know if he is, if it's just stunts and ways to stay kind of relevant because you married to Kim Kardashian and Kim Kardashian got millions of followers and, and you need me. I, where? Is he? I just, I feel, I really feel bad for him whenever I see him. Go ahead, Ray. I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. I think, um, I don't, I don't think he's trying to be more famous or as famous as his wife because if anything is the reverse, to me it would be the reverse because you know who she is, but then you always say for what? And then when you look at Kanye West, you know who he is, but you know why he, he is who he is. 
So I don't think I, I don't think he's trying to stay relevant because everybody knows who he is when they see him. I think from the for me for the from the perspective of his face and everything, and maybe because you've heard in the past of how he's had he's been diagnosed with bipolar and things like that. So it could be the medication he's taking that's making him like that. Um and then too, yeah, they eat good food. So you know, you, you eat good food, your face will go from where it was to <laughs> something you've never seen it before. Um, I, 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 I just honestly just think he needs help. I don't think, and I, I hate to say it like this, I don't think he has the support from his, from his. Uh, Cause I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about his side of I don't think he has the support he needs to give me what he what he needs. Shouldn't you be able to get that? You, you should be able to. Have, that's why people have an inner circle. Those your inner circle, your people that um call you, excuse me, call you on your shit, call you when you're wrong, and and, and congratulate you when you're right, but that tell you, hey, you your shit stank right now, and you need to check that. So, so his inner circle must be really just, are they scared? Oh, come on. What think, do you, um, Lisa always said, um, when I first met her, she was like, actually, your brother's keeper. I'm like, no, they grown. But I get it now. Yes, I am. <laughs> I think if, you're, if your inner circle only takes and don't give, then it's not, it's not an inner circle. It's just hand a circle. Out. It's, yeah, it's just a circle. I think that... Um, it's both of I think that he needs. I think he needs the help. I, Ron, that's where I'm at with this. I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to bad, bad mouth his family, so I'm not going to do that because I don't want nobody to do that to mine. But I think he needs the help. So. I I, I don't stuff. know. The only great thing I I thought about it. I thought this has got to be a joke, right? First of all, he's too late in a lot of states to be even considered. But the problem I had with it was in the, even the states that he would be okay in, he would then impact the vote amongst the young uh, youth so much that we could end up by default having another four years of the crazy orange guy. And so, um, and I'm not necessarily over the moon about the alternative, but I sure don't know I'm going to do another my fear with Chance the Rapper coming out and, and supporting him and Elon Musk. But now I didn't see all what happened, but something I think Chance the Rapper is taking some backlash to now <laughs> about being in his corner. So uh, I'll look at that a little bit more probably after we get off the phone or get off this call. But I, 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 I just couldn't see it. I, I will say this. I thought, well, if by some crazy chance he got in there, you can talk about the Kardashians all you want, but Chris Kardashian is brilliant at building brands because they were nobody. <laughs> Their father, Robert, was famous for, Robert had been an attorney for a very long time with an awesome practice, but what even brought him to the world uh, light was being part of the OJ trial. Uh, but the rest of them were just rich folks who lived in Calabasas, but she is brilliant at building a brand. So Chris worked for us. I mean, I, I could work with her because she know what she's doing. And I figured, well, the United States is going to go down in flames. At least we would have a brand new branding to come into the White House <laughs> before this nut take us out. <laughs> We'd have, at least she at least she fixed the brand the way it looked if she didn't do anything else because she cut some hell of five deals because Kylie and Kendall ain't got no talent but they're both billionaires. So, wow. <laughs> she, she, as a matter of fact, who has any talent in the family? But everybody got a billion dollars, so she's brilliant. I don't care what you say about the rest of it. So I thought, hey, we can get some support. Huh? We won't discuss talent. <laughs> right, right, right. I think Natanya Lumpkin has jumped in here and Tia and, and, and Sandra, you guys, I don't want to come on camera, huh? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> At least uh, take yourselves off mute and, and add in some stuff. If you got some stuff you want to say, we'd love to hear from you. For all those people who are streaming, watching us on Facebook, still, you can still come on into the Zoom room. Um, you can see we're still here. We want to hear what you have to say. 
continue to send us. We thank you for your support. Continue to send us your um, questions. We got some doozies coming up because as you might well know, we've already discussed a little bit of the Jada Will thing and we've been through some of those certain uh, valleys ourselves. So we had, we got hit with a crap load of questions this week from people about, well, do y'all have this problem? Did y'all go through that? If you watch our show, we went through some because we didn't kind of put it out there too. Um, so feel free to continue to send in the questions via the, the web page, via Facebook, via one of the groups, Instagram, whatever's most comfortable uh, for you and familiar to you. We are willing to entertain it. So um, my plug well, on that. Well, can I add something to that? Um, I think when you and I, um, uh, when Ozzy Davis, that yeah, passed, Ruby like, and that's, Davis. that's when we found out about Ruby D and Ozzy Davis, and that they had an open marriage. I was like, wow. Exactly. Now, and because they look like the quintessential perfect African-American couple, had everything right. Well, they did do it all right. They did it right by their rules, and that's what marriage is about, your rules and not everybody else's. Exactly. But I, don't I, I was going to say, yeah, they did it right for them. I would bet the Right, and the, and the Clintons took a lot of heat for it. And I think that they do it right for them. Everybody wanted to be shocked when Bill Cosby stuff. Camille Cosby won shot. You don't think she's been married to this man for 30, 40 years she was married to and what he's done. And that ain't so. Um, Sandra Mosley, how long you been married? This year will be, I know, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, year, this year will be 40 years. Wow. wow. And, and don't you know, don't you know if Emma start working out, <laughs> you're going to be like. <laughs> no, I'm going to be you like, go, baby, go, baby. Get it back. <laughs> 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 but I'm saying, you would, we, we, you know, you know, right. you ain't married somebody 40 years and don't know when something ain't right. So, right. I, I mean, I know America's shocked, but. And, and if, if these people want to be in that kind of arrangement, why do we care? I don't. I don't. I, right. I, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes even when we look at the um, the Trumps, you know, you look at them and think they're an odd couple. But then again, you know, that's their business. That's their business. Right. Yeah. Well, and and they not really that odd. Think about it. She a stripper. She a pedophile. They ain't that uh -oh. odd. They go together. <laughs> oh my gosh! Really, Lisa? <laughs> that's what we're saying. <laughs> The pictures that well let, let's 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 keep facts facts right look at the pictures that just came out the other day did you see the pictures the photo spread that came out of our all the nude pictures came out somebody republished them mm. we could, come on ain't no way michelle obama well first of all i don't want to see hillary clinton like that you can keep uh -oh. them or barbara bush uh -oh. uh, or laura bush either <laughs> Uh, I ain't gonna say that I want to see Michelle like that either. However, I'm saying, uh, if she had come out like that, we wouldn't be like, oh, that's the first lady. Although Michelle's a bad sister. I mean, I'm gonna give her her props, but I'm gonna try to keep it clean and respectful. Okay. <laughs> you keep it clean and respectful. I'm gonna keep it real. Michelle come out with a, I'm, I'm looking at all of it. I don't know what <laughs> You keep it clean and respectful. Rashida? Lisa. <laughs> two different people, two different people. <laughs> but anyway, you know, so, you know, I'm just, my point was we could not, Barack Obama would be, I mean, he's still paying for the birther thing. Come on. Ain't even an office. And he, he, he's getting blamed now. I mean, he's still being blamed now for COVID. Yet yesterday's press conference was freaking hilarious. I was like, is this guy on acid? <laughs> Wait, did you say acid? Do people still do acid? <laughs> he must. He must. He must be doing something. Did anybody else see the press conference? No, but I'm gonna go watch it after. White people and white people being in, being get, getting killed. Well, and, and oh, and and a lot. Okay, Lisa, we need yeah, you to so stop so moving. Yeah, so to ask him about you know what we gonna do about the about black. Oh. What are we going to do about the number of black people See, now being, being killed a jerk. by police officers? And he said, well, white people are being killed by them too. 
Oh, Jesus. Yeah, to be frank with you, you know, when, when he says stuff like that, it goes through one ear out of another by now. Because to me, you have to be intelligent enough to know by this point that you should not even be paying attention to him. <laughs> it's not even worth your time to even try to figure him out. It's just worthless. It's right. like it's not worth your time trying to figure him out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you can understand that one, right? <laughs> I, I agree. It was completely worthless. So but, even this morning, I heard it again. I did, I just muted the whole. I just turned the whole TV off. I didn't want. I didn't even mute him. I just turned the TV off. Wow. There's no point. Well, well, I, I will. When you brought that up, it did remind me of one thing. I'm starting to be still, Rashida. It did remind me of one. You know, we have this in the black community on black crime, and why is thing. Uh, that bothers me. I don't like that. And I don't like it because we kill white folks too, but we're not saying white on white crime. It's just right. crime. People kill. We are, to me, when it's said that way, it's like something's wrong with us. Exactly. We, you know, we, I feel like we're, we got black. Well, no, we got people killing people. White folks is killing white folks too. Exactly. It, 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 at the same rate, at the same rate. As a matter of fact, it's not even better. It, it's people killing people. Black folks kill more black folks because they commune with more black folks. Exactly. I know. We kill more white guys, folks because that's who they hang out with. If we hung, some, we'd be killing more each other. And sometimes men Go get ahead. upset with me when I tell them things like, well, actually, black women have more fear of black men as black men are more likely to kill a black woman than the other way around. And it's usually a black wow. man you're intimate with. Wow. Okay, say that one more time, Wayne. Say that one more again. <laughs> that sometimes I get men upset on our right. Facebook page, for instance. And, and that's true, right? It, is that chances are that a black woman is much more likely than a white woman to be killed by a black man who she's intimate with than a white woman will be killed by a white man that she's intimate with. Hmm. So black women wow. do have a, a, a statistically reason to fear a black man who they're sleeping with. Wow, that's deep. It is. It's scary. And I think one of the things that the uh, oh, in Prince George's County, which is right outside of D.C., as soon as the pandemic hit, their county executive or their mayor for the county said, one of the first things she said is that we know we have a problem with domestic violence. And so she said that despite the pandemic, we will not be letting up on it at all. And I was so glad she said that because she realized yeah. that it will put a lot of black women and black children uh, in harm's way. Because they'll be mm -hmm. in the house all day long with some black man mm -hmm. who might do something that he shouldn't be doing. And, she and, was and, 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 and so it's she really not for brothers to, to be offended. It's for them to understand it's a real thing that's happening. So more than being offended by it, what are we going to do about it? Exactly. That's the question. Exactly. What can you do about it? I mean, it's like, what are we going to do about it? But what can, can we do about, about it? it? Well, it, it, okay, so that goes, I think, goes to the conversation about defunding things. In, uh, and uh, we, we keep making this, uh, the idiot said yesterday, <laughs> they want to defund the military. They about. want to defund the police. And nobody's ever said. Nobody ever said. That. Uh, but it speaks to the heart of what you're bringing up here. What we're gonna do about it is, is create more resources to address you. Please get called out of the hundred calls. Eighty of them or something is about a domestic violence or a mental health issue. They are not psychiatrists. They are not counselors. They are not any of those things I so to re redirect the funding so that that they see call 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 gets routed to the resource is what we can do about it as long as the police as long as the police are the ones responding we're gonna be in trouble exactly i know what happened to me once with one of my uh to make a long story short one of my, my one of my neighbors husband's husband, one of my neighbor's husbands died and her, some of her boys was in a vacant house and we refused to call the police because the, the fright, the, we were afraid that the police would go in 
find them doing something they shouldn't be doing, and then kill one of them. It was much better to call the mother and let her take care of it. Wow. And have a son that was still alive. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, back in the day, and Isaiah Thomas used to talk about this all the time. He would get in trouble in Chicago. He's like, call the police. Please don't call my mama because she going <laughs> to kill me. <laughs> and everybody else along the way. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a healthy sense of fear. Yeah. Absolutely. I got a whooping by pop the. So in, in my neighborhood, I live in the same house my grandma built in 1960. I popped the firecracker. The Mitchells live, what, four doors down? That's the house. Uh, uh, I, uh, they live four doors down. When I cracked in front of Miss Mitchell's house, Mr. Mitchell scolded me. Mr. Mike scolded me. Miss Bailey whooped me. And uh -oh. then she told my grandmother when she got home what I did, who beat me in front of all of them to make sure they understood she took care of the problem. That was one of the only three that I got in my entire life. So I mean, that that was the neighborhood thing back then. So oh, yeah. you, you you know, call the police, please don't call my mama. But now you say, call the mama, don't call the police. It's like the grandmother who laid on top of her grandson recently to keep the police from shooting him. She jumped on top of his body while they had him on the ground. But oh, yeah, I remember she, that one. I remember that story. Yeah, she, they don't even care. They had another old lady that they beat up in the mall, so they don't care about that. Um, yeah, I don't know how you, I don't know how you even get, I don't even know how you get back to that, but to me, sometimes you can't even have a, an honest discussion with people about that. You know, like I said, we're a Pan-African magazine, so oftentimes we try to bring stories from other parts of Africa in the world, see how they deal with it. But I was saying in the Gambia, for instance, you don't see the police come. It's the people in the neighborhood who get the robber first. And then they will walk the robber to the police. So it's possible for human beings to do that. Well, I, and I think we did. And growing up in Gary, to me, that's what was done when we were growing up. Um, Partially, I would say, yeah. Happen in your, yeah, when things happened in your neighborhood, your neighborhood took care of that situation. Exactly. That, it came first. And, and, talk, and they kind of decided if they was going to call the police or escalate it from there, but they definitely took care of it first. You know, partially it could be that people move around so much so, now that you don't really know who your neighbors are. They haven't been there for a very long time. I mean, like we lived in Gary on the west side, and most of our neighbors have been there for a very long time, and many of them came from the same parts of the south. So they knew of hmm. each other at least. Yeah. Or maybe even knew each other. So I guess maybe maybe the, the question is how do you recreate a different kind of community because people are very disconnected. Right. You know. And you really do need that because the worst thing is to see something happen and then nobody say anything. Exactly. That's what I'm saying about, you know, a neighbor across the way, you know, the fact that I knew them made it more comfortable for me to say, hey, I know what's going on in the household and I definitely don't want her to have to deal with having a, a deceased husband and now a deceased son because I called the police and they went into an empty house, you know, and most of what they could have been doing was anything that could have been taken care of by her as opposed to the police. But you never know, the police might go in there and claim that one of them looked at them the wrong way or pointed something to them that was, a, that was a, a rock as opposed to a gun. Who knows? You said something right there, sir. Yeah, I know. I can stop by the police at least once. And it was a funny case because uh, at that time, I was moving from a rougher neighborhood to a better neighborhood. And I didn't have my uh, driver's license updated. So when he stopped me, he went on and told me that uh, he was stopping because my I posted red or orange light or whatever, whatever light, yellow light. And at the end of the day, after he arrested me and had me in jail for two hours, and I'm hearing him on the telephone talk about his girlfriend, how he want to get to it at night, which of course I found, <laughs> that felt kind of awful. Police would be t hit, talking to the telephone about how he gonna get with his girlfriend tonight. Let me hear it. And then he lets me go. He said, "Mr. Young, I won't let you go if I didn't know that you was gonna be like one of them knuckleheads down the street from you." And I was thinking, why he has to associate me with, with, with the people down the street? What was that about? Why can't I be treated as an individual? That's and crazy. He, so, you know, this was a black cop with a black man. So he was just assuming that like the other black people who live down the street. Mm -hmm. 
Wrong. Um, what happens? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of where we are. It, everybody is suspicious of everything that we just don't understand. So um, I, I'm going to invite you guys to watch one more thing. And, and I know Rashida and I said this one to tell folks, hey, you know, last couple of weeks, people have been coming in saying that they're tired, 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 tired. So this has been a, a safe place, I think, for folks to just express of how tired you are. You know, you, when you're African-American, you're always around of everything, aware of everything around you. Um, and somebody gave a wonderful this past weekend when they were saying to a gentleman, how long does it take you to notice that you're, you're uh, that you're not, well, when you walk into a room, do you ever notice how many white people in the room? He was like, no. He says, do you walk into the room? Do you ever notice how many black people are in the room? versus you. He said, no. He said, if you walked into a room and you walked in with all women, how long would it take you to recognize you were the only man in the room? He said, I'd mm -hmm. recognize by the way. He said, if you walked into a room and you, you, were, and you were the only white person, how long would it take you? He said, I would notice right away. He said, see, it took you, you only noticed the last two times. We notice all of those. There's not a scenario presented that we don't right. notice in. And that ring day after day but when right. you walk out the door, you walk and do it. When you walk to the grocery store, you do it. When you go to work, do it. on the way home, you just, you never can stop being a neighborhood, have to be able to do it even there. Um, and so people have been coming on expressing just how tired they are. So um, we want to continue to let this be a forum for folks to come out and express that. But we also want to try to start shifting it back a little bit. We were having much more upbeat, funnier conversations in the beginning because I think if we keep on being tired um, and keep on talking about it, we're going to continue to manifest it. So we want to start trying to shift a little bit back to funnier stuff and make it a little lighter. Uh, uh, just so that, you know, we can have some happier moments and maybe folks can look forward to this. I mean, we certainly don't want to shut you off. So if you still need to express that, come on, but we're going to try to mix, we're going to be intentionally trying to mix in some goods uh, so that we have some celebratory things to go out. If we don't hear no other time this week, we, we don't turn on Facebook or the news and see anything else. We want to have some celebrations coming out of your time here with us. So, um, Rashida, I'll hand that over to you for the final word, because we're down. For the final word? Oh. Um, I, um, Lisa, while well, Lisa's on sabbatical, I feel like I'm on my own personal sabbatical as well. And um, being by yourself, um, uh, well, um, I don't count by myself because I got Sasha the dog here. But um, being here allows me to um, be quiet, listen to uh, myself, um, journal. I'm, I'm enjoying being, enjoying the quietness. So when you have time and you have a moment, take a moment to, feel, just, you? to be quiet. Don't start no mess what you're saying. be no mess i'm saying that you're loud and you take up a lot of you may be small in stature but you your presence is humongous <laughs> you know what they say I mean, for those who don't know lisa's only four foot nine and by disney standards she's supposed to be in a car seat boom and that's the last uh, and so, the so you last had to come over day. and tell that right ray mill got to get something in because go ahead <laughs> <Ray Mill. laughs> Thanks, Bishop. What? Appreciate that. What Wait, say it again. I said thanks, Bishop. We appreciate that. That's the ongoing so joke. Much. So, yeah, Wayne and Sandra, Tia, um, we lost yeah. Latanya, Ray Mel. Thank you guys so much for being on with us this evening. Anytime, anytime, drop in. We do this every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central. Uh, we're those always looking for input, looking for more input, um, looking for more ideas. Um, we're just trying to do what we can to help our community continue to grow and move forward. So Absolutely. thank you guys again for joining us. One more time for you guys who are watching us out there. We got up to 300 plus viewers Ooh. tonight on our stream. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, 
send us, say, you know, subscribe, Instagram, Facebook, follow us, all that stuff. You know, I'm still learning social media, so I don't remember all that stuff. We have a wonderful social media manager, Chandra Franklin. I wouldn't trade her for anything in the world, hey, and I would not want to do her job. Um, and so uh, thank you. And Wayne, a uh, special shout out. Thank you to you for thinking we were worthy to even call and thank explore you. our story, Absolutely. that you would even put it in writing. We appreciate that. Um, and, and, and we want to have you back uh, because cool. I think that there's an opportunity to teach more about Pan-Africanism. Uh, for the folks who are still watching, please go on and subscribe uh, to Wayne's publication, uh, Port of Harlem. Um, dot, is it dot .net? Dot .net. Say it again. Harlem.net. Harlem.net. We name after Harlem because Harlem is the world's most famous pan-African community. So it's Port of Harlem.net. Harlem Renaissance. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, please subscribe. Also, we have some other vendors that are sponsors that are starting to help sponsor our segments. So make sure you go to Sanaa and get some of those wonderful smelling fragrances. We've been talking about applied pressure, which Rashida has with the jail nails. Ladies, it's still not time to return to those salons. Don't believe the hype. Don't come Damn out of with no COVID it. fingernails. Just oh, get I'm you serious some, about that. Get you some applied pressure <laughs> nails and put those things on. Um, and uh, oh, and we did mention that Sanders is going to you're breaking out in a couple of weeks since you're talking breaking about her journals because she has some journals. We, I'm sorry, we've seen we've shown uh, one of Sandra's journals. So we want to make sure you guys have opportunity to to get thoughts from her. She'll be back in a couple of weeks to talk a little bit about her business and the journals. Um, and then Raymel, who runs some wonderful podcasts mm -hmm. and coaching for young men. Please make sure you you, you follow these guys and um, um, support them. We thank you again and we love you. You guys have a great night. Oh, uh, you too. Thank you all. Good meeting. Thanks, you, man. Good, too. Good night. Good night.